Welcome back to the Power of Public YouTube channel. Today we're answering questions from the interwebs, so let's get to it. Welcome back to the Power of Public YouTube channel. We got some great questions during the week on our Patreon, YouTube community, Facebook and Instagram, so thanks to everybody that's sending the great questions. Now let's get to it. So the first question comes from MCR Carding, and he was asking how to get the rubber marks off the plastics. Now I've got some great tips to how to do that and we're gonna make a video in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned. But the three ways that I know of is with acetone. The other one is with the plumber's primer. Now this is a clear product you get from a plumbing supply shop. Uh, the plumbers use it on the PVC pipes. If you rub that on the rubber, it's pretty toxic but it will take it off. And the third way that a friend showed me just last week was using a razor blade and you can actually scrape the rubber off the stickers. Now, it, you gotta be careful obviously that you don't wanna cut the sticker, so you just scrape it in a backwards motion. But I'll show you that in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. Okay, so the next question is from William Lewis. And William wants to know how to service the bearings on his car and also how to adjust the sensitivity of his brakes. So the best thing, Will, is to just spray some lube into your bearings. Now, you can use a bit of degreaser and compressed air and then wash them out but it's really hard to get all the degreaser out. So maybe if you have a big off and you fill them full of dirt, you can do that treatment. Otherwise, when you come in during the week, just um, put some spray lube in there, so WD-40, and then spin the axle up. You can use a little bit of compressed air to blow out any of the excess WD and the, some of the solvents, and then a little bit of a spray with some, some lithium grease or PTFE. Okay, so the next one's from Almantis, and he's asking how to drive on a wet track. So, there's many ways you can do this, but obviously practice is key. But uh, yeah, you wanna be a bit more aggressive on the steering and the brakes. Now, obviously there's a lot of water around when it rains, and depending on how much it's rained is how wet the track is. You can be even more aggressive. You can drive around with the throttle on and the brake. You know, there's, no, a, there's not a lot of penalties for so what you call bad driving in the, traditionally to the dry. So, be a little bit more aggressive. Use your body and don't be scared to use the brakes and the accelerator at the same time. Okay, so the next question is from Benny Kahambura. Uh, hopefully I got that pronunciation right. And he's asking how do you fix a damaged front bumper? And the best way for that is to leave it out in the sun or we'll grab a heat gun and make sure the plastic gets nice and warm. And then you can use a bit of compressed air and you can fill up uh, the air through the nozzle. There's normally a hole in the front bumper where they injection molded it. And then if you just add a little bit of compressed air, it'll slowly bulge out in the heated area and it should pop out any dents that you've got in it. So be careful. The other way, if it's really damaged, is to heat it up and then get a screwdriver from the backside and then you can just put the screwdriver through and lever the bumper out. Ah, the next question is from Eric Chin and he's asking how do you drive on cold tires? Now, what I'd say is uh, the taller drivers go better naturally on the cold tires because they work the tire a bit easier. Now, us smaller guys with the smaller shoulders, you're going to have to be a bit more aggressive. You can drive around and you can, you can um, power brake or drive with the brakes on and the accelerator. You can also flick the cart into the corners a little bit more and work the steering wheel more on entry. It'll understeer and then snap oversteer. But you're going to have to watch for that only on the first two laps and then once you feel the tires coming up, go back to your smoother steering, smoother braking applications, and really smoothen up your driving style. Okay, so the next question comes from Fightman22, and he's asking about our test days and what is the process we go through and how do we go about achieve, achieving our objectives. So the best thing you can do, Fightman, is to maybe write down one or two things that you're trying to achieve, like uh, axle grades. Like this weekend, we're going out to the track and we wanna try a U, an N, and a H, just to see the trend of which way we're gonna go uh, in axle grades to get rid of a certain problem, which for us is that car is just hopping a little bit through fast corners. Uh, and then we're gonna combo whichever axle we like with a different tire pressure and a camber change just to dial it right in for the driver so it's perfect. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take session notes and the session notes we're gonna write in a diary. So we've got the date, well it's a date stamp or date stamp, whatever. So you've written the time down on the day that you're doing the practice so that when you go home and you're looking at your data on your, on your laptop from your Micron 5, uh, you can, there's, there's a little bit of revel, relevance 
from the timestamps of the micron. Otherwise, you've got a whole bunch of squiggly lines and data points, but you don't really know what it relates to. Whereas if you've written down 10.05, sunny, 28 degrees, no wind, track's awesome, medium axle, 12 PSI, you've got the basics to basic information to overlay with say the session at 11.05 when the clouds came over and you dropped the tire pressures and you put a harder axle and you changed the camber. So you can start to look for a trend in your data with the trends in your chassis tuning. Uh, the next one is from Tyler Smith and he's asking about the MXC versus the MXJ wheels and which ones we prefer. Well, I prefer personally the, the tires, <laughs> the rims that I, I, I'm gonna win with. So whichever is the fastest, if I put the J's on and they're quicker, I'm gonna use those or the C's. Uh, it depends on the type of tire you're running on and your ambient conditions. We generally run with the uh, MXCs in the hotter weather and the J's in the cooler weather, but other guys like to use the C's all the time. I personally don't have a problem with either of them. They're both great on the right day. So you just have to practice. All right, we've got another one from Benny Karambura and he's asking about how to stop hand cramps during a race. Now, Benny, what I say is maybe you're hanging onto the wheel too hard. Now, the steering wheel is not handles. It's only for steering. You should be able to use light pressure. What you want to do to hold your body back in the seat is to really flex your shoulders back and also use your legs up against a heel stop to hold your hips back in the seat. And then your upper body is free to move and you can hold your body nice and rigid back in the seat with your legs, which are big muscles. They never get tired. And then you can just use uh, light pressure in your hands to help steer it around the course. Hope that helps. Okay, so the next question's from Erin Sell. And she's asking about the OTK master cylinder. And she wants to know how to put it back on a go-kart because we recently changed her brakes. Her kids are young. And what we used to do there is change from the Tony Kart master cylinder to a dent master cylinder. So she's asking how to change it all back. And Erin, what you need to do is bring it to the house of power and get your good friends down here to do it for you. That's the answer for that. Our next question comes from a good friend of ours, Josh Dawn up in Brisbane. Uh, Josh has been racing carts for years and he's a great guy. So thanks for this question, Josh. And he's asking for the comparison of the Evo versus the non-Evo on the dyno and what the power difference is, if any. Now, Josh, the uh, Evo's biggest trump card is its bottom end power. The, the power valve stays closed and the bottom end torque is very impressive. Also to these new cylinders that have come out in 2019 are excellent. We're seeing huge gains in the mid-range as well. So Josh, what I'd say too is to stay tuned because what we might do is make a little midweek hitter on the dyno computer about the overlay of the Rotax Evo versus the Rotax non-Evo. Also for Frederick Sarkis, we'll do the Evo and non-Evo tag restricted set up as well. So you can see how much extra power you get with the um, new Evo engines. So our next question comes from Jordy in the Netherlands. And he was asking about the difference in the 12 and the 13 tooth sprocket for his Rotax Max senior racing engine. Jordy, the 12 and the 13, they're quite big. Traditionally, we're running down in the 11s and 12s here in Australia. So we'd run like say an 11, 80 or a 12, 86 for tag restricted. And then for the tag light, which would be your senior max in open category, we're kind of rounding down in the 12, 1280s, 1281, call it that. Now, if you put a 13 on, you're gonna to have to make the biggest sprocket on the rear up to about probably an 85. Now, the problem with that is that you're getting closer to the ground as your sprocket gets bigger. So if you're jumping curbs, you're more likely to bottom out and hit the chain onto the track. So you gotta be careful of that with the big sprockets on the rear. So if you're running the 12, you run a smaller rear sprocket. If you're running a 13, you're gonna run a bigger rear sprocket for the same gear ratio. So the next question is from Frederick and he is asking, is it better to upgrade his old Senior Max or save up his money and buy the new Senior Max Evo engine with the complete package? And is there a performance difference? So my answer for that is yes, you should save up your money and get a complete brand new engine, get a 12 month warranty, you get all the Evo upgrade parts. You get the latest and the greatest of the Rotax Evo engines. They're excellent. You're really going to like it. So if you can, save up your money and buy the brand new package. If you can't, get the Evo upgrades and bolt them onto your non-Evo engine. You're really going to enjoy the extra bottom end performance from the 
electric power valve. It's a fantastic addition to the um, Rotax engine. Now the performance difference is varied, but the new Senior Max engines with the new style cylinders are excellent. You're really gonna like them. I would say save up your money and get one of those. Okay, so our next question comes from AR and he's asking about carburation and how we get to the perfect carburation. And also too, do we read the spark plugs? Uh, the best way to get your best carburation AR is to use a lambda sensor or air fuel ratio sensor in the, in the header pipe. We, we have easy tunes here in Australia. Otherwise you can use the micron wideband sensor. That's excellent as well. And the beauty of that is that it stores the data so you can go back over it in the pits. Uh, and then you can make your adjustment and then go, go back on the track just to prove that it's worked the right direction. Now, the beauty of the Lambda sensor is it's pretty obvious when you get it wrong, because the num one, the performance sucks, but two, you, the, the data records everything, or the data logger, and then when you play it back, you can see that the numbers are wrong and you can just make the adjustments. And it's sort of, it's like a self-learning um, process because you make the change, whether you go right or wrong, and then, you just log the data, make the change the opposite way if it was wrong next time, and then boom, perfect carburation. Now as spark plugs go, if the spark plug comes out white, it's too hot. If it comes out black, it's too cold. And when it's chocolate, it's about right. So, or coffee color, sorry. So if you see like a hot or a cold plug, just change one grade down if it's uh, too cold, so if it's black and sooty, go to a warmer plug, and then if it's white and powdery or really dry, just go up one plug heat range, and that should fix your spark plugs and not your carburation. Two different things. The next question is from my good friend Craig Homewood, the slide dog racer over there in New Zealand. Thanks heaps for this question. He's asking about my name, and it's Derek Des or Desmond, and I answer to them all. My real name is Derek Jones, for anyone that didn't know already but you can call me any of those uh, names and I, you will get a response. So the next question comes from Stonesy3 and he's asking about the new compound MG yellows and what's the greatest starting pressure for those. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, my friend, but I would say, uh, depending on the racing and the conditions, summer, winter, hot, cold, North Australia, South Australia, it, it's always gonna vary. I know the guys run as low as eight pounds for the super long races and whether they're looking hunting for a lot of grip, other guys are running 11 and 12. You're really just gonna have to experiment for yourself for your driving style and the tracks. As a rough guide, I'd start around 10 pounds. If the cart's hopping too much, I'd come up. If it's not, I'd just go down half a pound either side of that. Jake Wood is asking about Dunlop DFM tires. And he's asking what is the preferred tire pressure for KA3? So similar uh, to the last question, with the Dunlop DFMs, we find Anywhere from 10 to 14 PSI works really well. 14 for the heavier drivers, and that gets rid of some of the, the hopping of the go-kart around our tracks, all the way down to 10 PSI. Sometimes we go as low as eight and a half or nine for the really light drivers, and especially in the longer races. If you are uh, in KA3 Junior, you can run around the nine and a half to 10 and a half pounds of starting pressure for the DFMs. And then if you're a heavier driver in those rear tires, you might not want to go much below 12 PSI or you'll start to get a lot of hopping in the back of the car. All right, the next question comes from Flynn T88 and he's asking about KA100 service intervals and how long we, we go between rebuilds. <sighs> Flynn, uh, depending on the level of competition that you're racing at, before every large national event, we're putting new piston and rings in our race engines. It's just so that we've got everything 100% perfect before we go to an event they're normally away from home, so both engines will get brand new piston and rings. And then we can use them for practice in between. Failing that, if you're just club day racing and racing locally, you can push them out to about 10 hours pretty safely. Otherwise, you can go all the way out to 15, but that's kind of in the excessive range. Keep your engine rebuild times if you're budget conscious to around 10 hours or less. Okay, the next question comes from Andrew Grimes. And he's asking, what do you do if your card is always loose in the rear? Now, there's a couple of things you can do but the best thing is to start moving some of the weight back to the rear of the cart. If you sat back behind the axle, so to speak, um, when you went into a corner, you would just understeer chronically, okay? Now, the opposite is true. If you sat right up and, and you're right up on the fuel tank, your cart would oversteer and would give you that loose feeling in the rear. So move your seat back, move some of the lead back onto the back of the seat maybe, and you can also maybe drop your tire pressures 
or change some of your chassis setups, but not seeing your car, it's be too wrong of me just to offer some random solutions there, but I would be pretty confident that you could move some weight back and also lower your tire pressures in the rear. The next question comes from Rick Jakes and he's asking about the X30 carby settings and also the idle screw. Uh, Rick, what I'd say about the X30 carby is I use them pretty much straight out of the factory settings of one turn on the low and one and a half turns on the high. That gets me almost 98% of the way to perfect tuning on the carby for the X30. The idle screw, I just screw it up until the engine's uh, wheels are spinning on the trolley or the stand and then I back it off until they just add a slow rotation. And that's how I set my idle. All right, Cashy Australia, what is the best brand of oil to use and what ratio? Now, that depends on what engine you're running. If you're running Rotax, you're gonna to wanna to use any synthetic branded oil. Motul, Rotax, XPS, the Rock Oil Synthetic, they're all really good. And you wanna use 25 mils per liter, which is 40 to one. Now, if you've got any of the other types of engines that we use, which is the Mini Rock, the KA100, and also to the X30. You're gonna to wanna to use the Motul Grand Prix 2T synthetic oil at 50 mils per liter. That's my go-to for everyone that doesn't know anything about go-karting oils per se. So if you haven't got a better idea for yourself, start there and you should have all your bases covered. So the next question from Lucas is rain setup. So I guess Lucas is asking what we would do in the wet. Obviously we put our wet weather tires on, you need to work out your optimum tire pressures depending on the compound that you're using. It could range from probably 12 to 15 PSI, right up to 25 PSI, depending on the brand of wet tires you're using. You can also put the front bar, torsion bar in if your cart has that, that's what I like to do. Some guys like to put the front wheels all the way out and bring the rears all the way in. I don't myself personally, I just put the wet weather tires on and go for it. And that's my two cents for rain setups. Max Newling is a new go-kart dad. And he wants to know about pre-race, post-race, car maintenance. Now, Max, we have covered this in our exclusive video series over on Patreon. Now, you can sign up to that to get access to it. And we cover these things in great detail. So head on over to Patreon and check it out. Okay, so we're getting towards the end of the Q&A. A couple questions to go. And Jake Hang is asking about lead. He needs to add two to three kilos. And he's asking where to put it. Jake, what I'd say is it's not going to make a huge difference. But where I'd start is over on the left side near the battery. Add your two kilos there and another one kilo underneath one of your legs. If you really want to get super technical, you could go and get yourself four bathroom scales, set them up on some nice flat concrete, weigh your go-kart and corner weight it, and then move the three kilos around until you get some perfect weight balance on the chassis. And that would be the best way to go for your extra two to three kilos. So the last question is from Jared Dirk one and he's asking about Rotax rebuilds. Is it worth rebuilding them? Do they come up as good as brand new or do you just throw them out and buy a brand new engine? What I say today is 100%. Get it rebuilt by your local guy. Rebuild it yourself. They're a fantastic engine. You can buy all the parts. The parts are excellent. Put them in and it should go as good as brand new if not better. Okay, so there you have it. Q&A done and dust it again for another month. Thanks to everyone that wrote a question in on Patreon, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. We really appreciate it. Couldn't do these videos without you. If you love the video, give us a thumbs up, turn on those notifications, hit the subscribe button, smash it if that's your thing. Go to our Instagram and Facebook and follow along there at Power Republic or go to our website www.powerpublic.com.au. Grab yourself a t-shirt, Tony Cart jacket, or a brand new Tony Cart. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Okay, so the next question comes from Tom Steinfort and he was asking, would I prefer to be a set of traffic lights for the rest of my life or a witch's hat? Um, Alamantis, is it? Alamantis. Alamantis? Is that kind of right? I'll do it again. Humbura. Benny Kahambura? Kahambura. Benny Kahambura. To sort of, um, Oh, last, forgot the word. Um, okay, so the next question is from our good friend Jordy, and he is asking about failing that you can. No, failing that. Cut that bit out.
which is the Mini Rock, the K100, and also to the X30, you're gonna to want to use a 